God bless you, woman of God. Welcome to our channel. If this is your first time here, I would suggest you hit the subscribe button and follow us for the next one. Today, I will be sharing with you how I personally study the Bible. 10 techniques to get deep into the Word. In a previous video, I shared that I begin my Bible study and routine normally right after I pray and sometimes in the middle of my prayer, I do some light reading. The first thing I can suggest anybody, if you are relatively new to the Word or if you have just given your life to Christ, is for you to read the entire Bible from Genesis to Revelation at least one time in your life to get yourself acquainted with the Word of God. It is not wise to do an in-depth Bible study when we are not familiar with the stories of the Word of God. Every time you go to your service at church and you hear the preaching, sometimes you don't even know what they're talking about. You've never seen the story, you've never heard the story, and it makes it very difficult for you to comprehend the basics behind the preaching. Therefore, one of the first things I recommend anybody to do is to do a reading, just a flat through reading from Genesis to Revelation of the Word of God. A few years ago in our congregation, we set ourselves to do just that. And uh, the ladies, the women's ministry, we all went and uh, purchased the Bible, the woman after God's own heart, this beautiful, gorgeous Bible here. It's written by Elizabeth George, just like the book, A Woman After God's Own Heart. And in this Bible, every day, she gives you a daily portion to read. Normally, it would take you about 15 minutes to read each portion. And it gives you a daily devotional with wise and um, simple life application tips. I believe this is a great start. It's one of the best places you can start for doing a whole year Bible reading plan. This is the Bible, A Woman After God's Own Heart. And I know it's in Spanish, but basically it has the same structure. It has the name of the book, Ezra, the theme for an explanation of the chapters. It also has a timeline down here, a timeline of the events. This Bible is gorgeous. A little direct to your heart advice. Where can you find things or specific uh, stories? And another little um, advice. For your everyday lecture, it gives you the day that you're reading on, a theme for the day with a daily devotional. And it tells you on the bottom, the Bible read in one year, Ezra from chapter one to chapter four. So for this particular day, you would read this portion and you would read in Ezra chapter one to four. And it tells you that your next devotional is located in page 620. Another place where we can do this is the Bible apps. We will talk about that in a tip later on in this video. Once you have read the Bible entirely from Genesis to Revelation, then we can start the in-depth Bible study. And how do we exactly just do that? Well, we choose a book from the Bible that we are fairly interested in a book that we want to learn more about, a book that we feel that is going to give us wisdom, understanding, or further strengthen our spiritual relationship with the Lord. We choose a book and we begin to study each chapter of that book, if possible, verse by verse. And when we do this, we begin to analyze the history, the culture, the origin of the words in the Hebrew or in the Greek. Why was it written? For who it was written? And we begin to dive deep and deeper into that specific verse. In order to do this, the first thing we need to do is understand that the Bible has been written or translated into many, many languages and versions. Therefore, one Bible verse can uh, be written in a special form in one version, but then there are versions that make it a little bit more understandable to the reader. The King James Bible has traditional wording that is no longer used in our day to day. Therefore, it may be a little harder for some people to understand the Word of God when they are reading in the original King James Version. And it is very important for you to know that there are other, um, like the New Translation and, and other Bible uh, versions that will help you understand the Word a little bit better. What I personally do is I enjoy reading all versions of the Bible that are possible and available to me. I read it in different versions and I compare them so that I can get a much 
greater understanding of what the author was trying to say. To do this, I normally use the Bible app. You can set it up and click all the Bible versions that you want to see and compare them right there in one screen. I also have a lot of physical paper Bibles. I love my paper Bibles. And if you can see back here, this is only a few of the Bibles that we possess in this house. We have tons of Bible just because we like, we love the Word of God and we like to see it um, explained differently. And there's also different Bibles for different purposes. For example, Bibles for leaders like the John Maxwell Leadership Bible. There are many versions of women's Bibles. There are many versions of Bible study Bibles. I know I'm, I'm rumbling here, but there, there are just so many versions and specifically designed Bibles to help different people in different stages of their lives. Which brings me to the next technique, and it is invest in a study Bible. It is one thing just to read a normal Bible, then to read a Bible that includes studying details, details about the culture, details about the history, details about the purpose for which that passage of the Bible was reading for. There are many study Bibles that are great and that they go in depth into different areas. But my particular choice for my daily studying is Life Application Bible. Once again, I have the Spanish version because my husband and I, as you may know, we pastor a Hispanic congregation in Masca, Florida. So most of our Bibles and most of our books are in Spanish, um, but I know that there are the English versions out there. This Bible is great because it gives um, in-depth information about the, the land, the countries, the different um, portraits of the uh, characters in the Bible. It is an awesome, awesome uh, studying tool in my repertoire. Tip number five, Bible apps that I recommend and I daily use for my studying. I use the YouVersion Bible app. Like I mentioned before, it's one of my go-to apps for my light reading for daily devotional. It is also my go-to app when I want to compare Bible verses. It is just a handy, very convenient application to have. I also use an app called Strong's concordance app this is a this is an electronic version of the paper book this book is um you can find this book in english and in spanish the strong's concordance is a dictionary that translates the old testament from the original hebrew word through english and from the greek original word to our english words it helps us understand what the original word meant when they wrote the Bible in the original scriptures. A lot gets lost in translation, so it's very important for us to learn what the word meant in the original and what the word means now. I strongly recommend that you either get a, a paper book, if you are more of a paper person, or you get this uh, app, or you get both. I particularly have both. I have the, the Spanish version of the Strong's Concordance book and I have the English version of the Strong Concordance app. That way I can uh, nourish myself with the knowledge that I need. Another great option that is available to you out there is called the Vine, the Vine Dictionary. It's also a Hebrew, Greek dictionary that it's available either in app, in PDF download, and you can also find the book. But the one I personally use is the Strong. Another app that I use is the Free Dictionary by Farlex. This dictionary is great because as the title says it, it is free. You download this dictionary and it gives you the option to search for the definition of that word in so many languages. I honestly don't know the amount of languages that it provides, but I know that it has a ton of languages. When you search for the word or you start typing in uh, a list of different options starts to come up. You choose the word that you want. It gives you the grammar of the word, the definition, other words that are similar to it, a translation if you're looking for a translation. So it is a very uh, convenient dictionary that is available to you. For me, it is very important to understand the meaning and the definitions of the words because it gives me a deeper understanding on the Word of God. We are down to tip number eight. Write the key elements that stood out to you during your Bible reading. 
if you drawn out knowledge from your reading, if you learned something, if something was impactful to your life or you believe it's a key um, element that you will remember in the future or that you want to remember in the future, I would suggest you take some time to write it down. Uh, make some notes on your, on your findings. There is a Bible called the Journaling Bible. You can write notes in the bottom of this Bible or in the sides of it for future reference. This is one of the forms that I use to do the in-depth Bible study. Again, as I mentioned before, we lead a Hispanic congregation. Therefore, um, most of our Bibles and our studies are in Spanish. But this is the uh, journaling Bible. It's just a simple Bible. I created a legend and divided the different areas in which I want to focus my in-depth studying journaling Bible simple doesn't have any studies and then I choose particular words and I look for the definition or the depth of particular words that are repetitive like in this verse of uh, James chapter 1 it talks a lot about um, trials and tribulations so um, I seek for particular words that are repeated throughout um, like in this verse Temptation, temptation, tempted, tempting, temptation. And then I look for the definitions. I look for the meaning. I look for the wisdom in it, for the um, depth in what I'm studying. It may look like a little mess, but I love that little mess right there. Another way to take down notes is to dedicate a notebook just for Bible studying. And every day when you Bible reading time, you write down the things that you learned or the things that um, stood out to you. I also used, I want to show you um, a way that I was doing it before. Prior to using the journaling Bible, I was using a faith paper planner by Mambi, the Happy Planner Collection. This is an old one, of course. And I just chose each day in this uh, horizontal layout and do one verse each day. So chapter 1, verse 12, chapter 1, verse 13, chapter 1, verse 14. And each day I would write something in regards to that study for that particular week. Uh, I would highlight the words that I wanted to look for, the definitions, and write down what was my uh, thoughts and what was my input in regards to that. And I would do that for every single verse in that um, particular chapter. And for that particular book for that matter. So each single word that uh, meant something to me, I would look for the definition. Tip number nine, review the context. Most of the times when we read a Bible portion, we tend to read just that verse that we're dealing with. But normally, and in most cases in the Bible, it comes from a previous reading, uh, maybe couple of verses or a full chapter that was unleashing the story of that particular verse. If you only read that one verse, it is very easy for us to misinterpret the Bible, to say that it meant something that it really, it was not the real meaning of it. Therefore, it's very important for us to go back and read the context of that verse to gain knowledge of what was happening before that led to that story that we're reading at the moment. It also helps when you perform a little research on the culture and the history and the place where they were, what was happening then to bring more understanding to what you're reading. Last but not least, I would say read a well-supported, reviewed Bible commentary that is biblically sound and that aligns with the Word of God. Of course, when we look at other people's commentaries, even the ones in the study Bibles. It is us human beings that are explaining things. Even though many times we won't agree with what is written on the commentary and sometimes on the Bibles, that we, the study Bibles. It is of great advantage and assistance to us to see other people's perspective and other people's knowledge in a subject to help us understand better what we're reading. At the end of the day, the in-depth Bible study, what is seeking for is for us to understand deeply what was meant to be transpired, what was meant to be teached to us. 
Therefore, the more knowledge we can acquire on a certain particular subject, the more we will understand what was trying to be done or what was happening in that particular time of the history of the Bible. There is no right or wrong technique on studying the Bible. What might work for me may not work for you. What I may do that will bring joy to my life by doing it may seem like hassle to you. Look at the things that can bring joy to you and that can make your Bible reading and learning learning an adventure that it can make it an enjoyable activity in your life. Bible reading should never be a tedious task it should be something that you're passionate about and that you enjoy. I know most of my ladies out there are supplies junkies like I am. Therefore, I want to share with you a few tips in regards to what I use for highlighters, marking my Bible, writing on it, supplies that I use for my Bible study. Let's talk about some supplies here. I particularly have this bag from the Happy Planner, this uh, pen bag. I keep all my pens, my markers, my scissors, and all my supplies in here. A corrector for when I'm doing it in a notebook. An eraser. Scissors. Some magnetic um, markers to mark my pages. This was a gift from somebody. This one came from Dollar Tree, so I'm not quite sure um, if you can still find them. We have these friction highlighters from Pilot. And they are awesome because you can mark something and um, with the friction tip you can erase whatever you marked if it's not what you wanted to mark in the first place. And it will look just good as new. Or you can use the gel highlighters. That I love these are awesome they came from the from Walmart but Amazon has a good um, similar version I honestly try to find them again at Walmart but I couldn't so I found a very nice um, substitute to it in, in Amazon and I will link it below for you these are just like crayons you can write and they do not they don't pass through the other page As far as pens goes, I love these uh, Papermate Enjoy pens, 0.7. They are awesome. They write so beautiful. Unfortunately, they are a little thicker, and depending on how you write, it can be seen through the other side. This is a normal paper, so you don't see it. But when you when you use it on your Bible, it may come through because how thin the pages of the Bible are for which you can also use a simple normal bullhead pen that normally doesn't transfer through some people don't like to write in their Bibles some people love to write in the Bibles I respect both sides me personally I love to mark my my Bible highlight the words that have spoken out to me that have um, impacted me in some way or form and I also like to write little notes on the sides of the Bible I hope this all was helpful to you and that uh, you can apply some of the knowledge you have acquired today in your own Bible study in time and that it can develop your spiritual life to a place that you in your heart have been yearning for I want to say thank you to all the people that have commented in the previous videos and I know that a lot of people loved the Notion platform and are interested in learning more about it and I will be recording a video in the future on how I set it up Notion. In the beginning it is, it is a difficult system to get acquainted to but once you have your system set up it is the best um, productivity tool that I can share with you but I will do that in a future video. So once again, thank you for watching and I'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye.